Hey everyone, welcome back to James' Repair Shop. Well, I'm out in the van, the Pleasure Way van. Uh, it's a 2006 Pleasure Way. Uh, we bought this van in uh, 2017. So this is 2024, so we've had it for a while. Uh, let me flip you around, let's show you what it looks like in here. It's a Mercedes Sprinter van um, under the Dodge label. It has pretty much everything we need. It's been really good for uh, traveling, light, you know, you, you do, uh, you know, kind of, we, we don't like to stay in one spot too, too long. So it's been great for quick travel. And that's her. It's, uh, like I said, a Mercedes chassis. It's got everything we need, bathroom, shower, fridge, stove, everything. And we, we've had great luck with this van. It's been good. We've had a couple of issues uh, with the turbocharger, turbocharger resonator in particular. It's a little plastic piece that goes on the turbocharger. And uh, it split on us one time. We were in Nova Scotia and it split. And you lose all your power on the hills. You don't have any turbo boost anymore. But other than that, this van has been pretty maintenance free. Well, not maintenance free. I do the, the maintenance on it, but it's repair free, except for this the key fobs and ever since we bought this uh, van these darn key fobs never would work I've changed the batteries in them and more than once trying to get them work so the first couple of years that I've had this van or we have my wife and I've had this van I would uh, before we would hit the road in the spring I would go through the wire harness and I would try to get these key fobs working I have wire schematics I bought a control module for the keyless entry. I've done it. I've done everything I know how to do with this. I so after about on the third year, after the second year, but on the third year, I decided, well, I'll take it into the dealer or to a, a certified shop, and they'll be able to fix it for me. Now, six hundred and sixty dollars later, they informed me that they didn't know what was wrong with it. However, they did throw in a, uh, they call a firmware update on the engine. Didn't see a difference, but hey, it's done. Uh, that was done for free, which should have been done anyway. However, they still didn't know how to fix the uh, issue with the key locks, the, the key fobs. Their suggestion was take it directly to Mercedes, but be aware that it would be probably, I think they estimated me $1,600 more at the minimum to have them look at it and probably replace a module, uh, the screen module. If you're familiar with the Dodges, they have that screen module in them. And you know what? I said, no, I'm not going to do that. So we live with the key fobs the way they are. Because just so you know, all the electronics, except for the screen, the screen is up under the steering wheel, but all the fuses, all the relays and everything are all under, for the most part, under the driver's seat. So you have to pull the seat out, the fuse panel. I mean, you can do it, but it's easier if you just take the seat off. So probably the neighbors were thinking, holy man, what's this guy doing this year? Does he ever give up on that? Anyway, never got him working. So this year I decided I would get right here, one of these, these little guys right here. So what this is, is a $20 remote entry keyless system. Well, that's the sticker on there. Here's the side here. So let's have a look inside uh, what this is. And uh, for 20 bucks, if it works, I'll be more than happy. So let's, uh, let's see if we can install this in the van. But let's take a look what's in the box. Well, what's in the box? Well, this $20 purchase from Amazon. Get it open here. Set of instructions like so there we go there's the control module and the uh, key fobs are taped to the antenna they're not taped to it they're tied to the antenna on the key fob or the key uh, or the keyless entry control module right there and there's the wire harness right there so not a lot in the box for 20 bucks that's about what you get so to my understanding uh, that uh, control module that remote their keyless control module uh, is activated in two different ways. Well, the cars that go in are activated two different ways. 
they're activated. Well, actually, it shows three on there. One's pneumatic, um, but generally they're electric locks on cars. But this does cover pneumatic ones. And I'm not doing this video as any kind of promotion for this or anything. I just thought I'd, you know, out of desperation to get these key locks working, I would try this cheap thing. It may be all I need. And if you're having trouble with yours, it may be all you need as well. So anyway, uh, getting back to what it does, it does pneumatic. It does a positive uh, activation, which uses the full the voltage, and then it also does negative activation, which uses the ground as a uh, triggering makes connection to the ground to trigger the locks. Now I've done a lot of work on this fan and I'm pretty sure uh, this is a uh, negative activation system. So it's pretty simple. It, it has to just be grounded out. We'll get into that when we get in there. All right, so let's go up front and I already uh, pulled the switches out because the actual um, control module for the remotes, for the, the original remotes, it's all under the seat. And I've already been in there. I've been in there a hundred times. But I think I can do this from up under the dash, uh, up at, by the uh, console, yeah. because I'd rather have it up there anyway, because if I put the remote underneath, the remote module underneath the seat, it's going to be encased in metal, because that's a metal case in there. So I want to kind of get it up closer to the window or up, up in the dash further, so it have better range. All right, so let's go up front and I'll show you what we're facing there. And we'll do a little testing to see uh, if this is negative or positive uh, activation. Let's go up front, take a look at up here on the console. Like I said, I already pulled the switches out. I'm going to check now to see if it's a negative. Well, I'm pretty I'm confident it's a negative, but to check it, you can uh, take your multimeter like here, my grubby old multimeter and you can put it on uh, diode check or continuity test it's right there and this will give you a beeping sound like that so i'm going to set that aside you guys don't need to see the multimeter so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to check to see oh before i get going here i should talk about this so i'm just using a 12 volt like a cigarette lighter for power and for ground cigarette lighter plug because it's right there and it's active all the time so I have the brown clip on the negative, so I'm just going to clip it on the negative of my, uh, if you can see that, the negative of my multimeter, and I'm going to use the positive for testing. So let's find the grounds first. So we've got the plug here. This is upward position. So there's a ground. A brown one is ground in these vans, so it hits it right there. So it goes right to ground. And I believe there's another one that's grounded in here. This one over on the far corner, the bottom corner, on the opposite corner. So the upper corner and the bottom corner are ground. The last scene you saw, I was uh, found the ground wires right here, right there. So the brown wire and the, the gray and uh, with a green stripe with some little red dots on it. Those are the ground wires coming into the switch. But I never showed, I think I lost the footage somewhere which wires actually trigger the door locks so in order to trigger that the, the uh, all locks which is the upper part of the rocker it's the white wire with a yellow stripe if you own one of these vans if you don't well yours will probably be different so I'll just check it there so i'm doing the upper because it's on the bottom part of the switch there see there so now the passenger side which is the lower part of the rocker is the white and red wire like that and locked again and unlocked again so that's it that's the part that i didn't have in my video so this unlocks the passenger side doors and the rear door like that that locks it and then it unlocks it so here's where i'm running into problem with this uh, inexpensive key system it works so if i push the upward button like here this should lock and unlock all the doors. So they're unlocked right now. So right there, they're locked. And I push it again, I've unlocked them. So when I push the lower button, which is marked as unlock, it'll unlock the passenger side and the, sl the sliding door and the rear door. And when I push it again, it uh, unlocks it. 
rather I think I had that backwards but whatever you get the drift so I'm gonna leave it like that because that's a heck of a lot better than what I had I don't think there's any other way to do it I ended up using the white wires right here like I said and uh, the orange wires I'll tape off the yellow wires were down here I have them to ground which they they all had to go to ground I may be able to at some point bring in the uh, trunk one I'll have to read up on it a little bit but I'm not too worried about it but since I don't really have a good indicator of the doors locked or not locked I am going to hook up the parking lights at some point so when I push these buttons because the unlock one here will give you two flashes of the light and the lock one will give you one flash of the light but I'm not 100% sure but I want to hook them up anyway so I'll end up hooking up the parking lights in time but for tonight, for now I just want to get this working and it's working great and here's the little control box and you can hear it click when you when you do it a little relay in there click so you know it's working and either button will lock or unlock so that's it they're working they're unlocked right now so I lock them and unlock them using the same button and this is going to be a little bit of a learning because you once you leave the vehicle you won't know for sure which way they are but I can live with that I mean as we're, as we are lock walking away we can test them but it's rather than putting the key in the door and, and turning the key and all that stuff I mean eventually the door locks wear out by doing all that this this will make them last quite a bit longer and I'll continue to figure out a way of getting the button to only do one thing. But I, I think with this van, unless I go right into the heart of it down under the seat, I think I'm stuck with the way it is now with this uh, inexpensive. But hey, not a bad looking fob. So let me get it all wired up and neat and tidy and all back in place and see how it works. So now that we know we've tested all this, I have put the plugs back in and I went to take this this piece off and I don't have to take all this off so if you have one of these sprinter bands you don't have to take the whole housing off you can get at it by taking this this collar off of the shifter and that leaves it open um, in here so I get it open again I'll probably have to pry that a bit get yourself some uh, trim tools would be better I'm out here using screwdrivers but be gentle if you do take that off and then down in there there's a screw and these are torx screws so there's only one screw holding it on i've taken it out already and then you can take your trim tool or screwdriver in my case and then you can start lifting it up like so and once you get it pulled up like that it'll move and then you can pull it up over the shifter and then you have access to the whole thing so now that I know that uh, I can use this switch, now I can work in here, put the switch back in, I can work on the wires in here, makes it easier, and then I can install the uh, module up in here somewhere. There's a nice little metal bar right there. I could probably screw it to that with some uh, self-tappers or there's a piece of plastic. Uh, lots of places to put it. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. So now that I have that off, very simple to get off. And, uh, and then I have my power right here, power and ground. I'll tap into that for, uh, to, to, to run the control module. And that's about it. So let's get her wired up. It's all wired up and the harness is all taped back up nicely. White uh, wire and the white with black wire are tied in. Uh, ground wire and the power wire are tied into the uh, 12 volt port. That's constant power left the fuse out a little bit so we can get out if I need to and if you do own one of these sprinter vans like this there's a screw that holds this piece on it's a perfect spot to mount that box right there tucked it all up in nice and that's it so we put her back on like this and then I'll have to put the screw back in once I get it down in there but I wanted to check it there's one now let's see over there. So this is for the passenger side, like so. Oops, not focusing very well. Like that. And then this one here will do all doors. And the one, one on the driver's side as well. That's one fob, just double check the other fob. Yep. So for 20 bucks, now it's not 100% and I still have to uh, wire in a set of headlights or to the parking lights, which I'll do that in time. 
but for now just to be able to unlock the doors is pretty darn sweet actually been a lot of years fiddling with keys and everything but that's good now i have a fob that works just have to remember that it's uh double clickers it's the same as a dash i think my wife and i are pretty familiar with how that works but if you're not then that's how it goes uh 20 bucks plus tax amazon and if you have a set of uh locks that aren't working or your fobs are gone and you have no way to program them hey pretty cheap i have no idea how long it'll last but if it lasts a year and i have to do it again it's pretty simple all right everyone i hope that was helpful to anybody out there with one of these sprinter vans because i have a feeling a lot of them are the same now maybe not if yours has never been converted but ours has been converted and i believe that something happened in the conversion that we lost it and what i have found out about these it's even possible that once you take the original radio out, you lose that, that capability, but I don't know for sure. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully that was helpful. And hey, get yourself a set of $20 remotes. Catch you in the next one.